Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we're taking the Volvo 850R down our rally track. <laughs> So welcome back to another episode of our rally track on Forza Horizon 5. So far we have run five different vehicles down our track and we have not had a single front wheel drive vehicle run our course yet. So today I wanted to pick something front wheel drive and front engined and something a little bit different, the Volvo 850R. Now I've not had great success with this vehicle on road so i'm hoping that off-road it's going to come good i have tuned the heck out of this thing as a road going vehicle and i have not had any success with it so i'm hoping that it's going to be a lot better today so let's go ahead and upgrade the thing let's see what we can do with the volvo hopefully off-road this thing's going to turn in and be a monster it is front wheel drive and it's front engined Unlike the Ford GT70 in the last episode, which was rear wheel drive and rear engine. So let's see how the two compare. We start off in C class and I'm thinking we're going to need to swap in a better engine. I'm going to go ahead and put in the racing uh, straight six turbo. Now, as per the rules of this series, we are leaving all the vehicles with their stock drivetrain. The thing is front wheel drive, we can go ahead and do a rear wheel drive conversion or all wheel drive in case you're interested, but that is not what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going ahead and slapping on Forza Aero for added PI and traction. So there we go. Now all the vehicles in this series are upgraded to S1 class and they will be running the off-road tyre rally tyre compound unless they can only be fitted with the race tire compound and this is because all of the vehicles in the series are built as a rally car it's to show you guys some of the best cars to build in Forza Horizon 5 for the dirt racing series my favorite racing series and a lot of those tracks take place over dirt and tarmac so you want grip on both surfaces now the off-road race tire compound does not have very good traction on the road, whereas the rally tyre compound is slightly better. All the vehicles are going to be fitted with the rally diff, which I just put the race diff in by accident. And uh, they're going to be fitted with the off-road springs and dampers as well, which are right there. Full anti-roll bars and as mu much weight reduction as the PI allows for. So we're already up to S1 class, which is a good sign. Let's go ahead and slap on all these upgrades in here. We've got a turbo and we can go for a little bit of, um, we can get a little bit bigger displacement in there. We're only just into S1 class actually. The PI didn't really move much on those last upgrades. so. We end up with a thousand horsepower, although we are front wheel drive now. So I'm hoping that in this episode, we're not going to see a lot of um, oversteer action, probably a lot more understeer. Hopefully with the weight of the engine pushing down on those front wheels, we might actually be able to use it. The Volvo could be a big surprise. I'm hoping it's going to be. 901 pound feet of torque the thing weighs just around two tons which is to be expected it's a big estate car and it has a 3.4 engine in there with the turbo on front wheel drive so not horrendous i'm going to go ahead and tune the volvo slap on some paint and i'll see you guys at the rally car okay here we go with our omega express Volvo 850R. Now, I apologize for the alert at the top. Okay, well, there we go. It's disappeared. The Volvo is struggling to put down that power, front wheel drive. 
But I'm hoping we're not going to see so much oversteer action since it is front wheel drive and not rear wheel drive. The turning should be much better. Quite a lot of understeer to be expected. Now we're taking it nice and slow with the Volvo. We're going to be using the handbrake quite a bit, I think. It's struggling to put that power down. It's wanting to hit that rev limiter. I'm keeping it in a high gear to try and negate as much wheel spin as possible. But I'm sure you can see that it keeps understeering quite a lot, this car. I'm only about half throttle through most of this course. Volvo is struggling quite a little bit there. It is uh, feeling quite a slow run with the Volvo, I'm not going to lie. Now, a lot of you have been asking me why we're running the vehicles with their stock drivetrain, and I try to explain this in every episode. It's because in real life, that's what they do when it comes to rally cars. They run two wheel drive cars against rear wheel drive, they have front wheel drive, they have all wheel drive. Now they don't usually um, they don't usually leave them stock nowadays. This is more back in the day. A lot of vehicles nowadays are converted to all-wheel drive, to make them more competitive. But I like the idea of running two-wheel drive against the all-wheel drives as a little bit of a comparison. Now we're coming up to the horribly deceptive corner here, so we're going to use a little bit of handbrake, get that tail out, it has sort of uh, cut back on me, my Volvo is just fighting me for control here, I don't feel like I'm controlling the car, it feels like the Volvo is controlling me. Now we're already up to the 2 minute 20 mark there, this is possibly going to be our slowest car yet. There we go, across the line at 2 minutes 29.683. That is our slowest lap time so far, but I feel like there's a lot of area to improve there. If I keep the vehicle under control as much as possible, keep it in a higher gear, it is possible we could match the Pontiac's 2 minute 23 or maybe even beat it. Let's see what we can do in our next run. Okay, here we go for our second run. Not sure why that alert keeps popping up, but please just ignore that. And let's see if we can actually get a little bit of this power down this time in the Volvo. Across the first water splash, not too bad. Getting it slowed down for our first corner. I'm going to keep it in fourth and fifth most of the time and just try and... Uh, Put the power down in the straight, I think, is going to be the answer. Through the second water splash, onto the bigger third water splash now. Volvo being quite a low sprung car, it does get slowed down quite a lot through there. I'm sorry, my words are failing me a little bit as I try and commentate this. I am commentating live for those of you who have been asking. So if I go quiet, it is because I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating quite a lot to keep this Volvo under control here. We're going a little bit off the course there. Now, the Volvo is fighting me for control quite a lot. With it being more of a road vehicle, it isn't soaking up the bumps quite as well as we saw with the GT70 and the Lamborghini. But it's not doing terribly. Let's see what we can do on this straight here. I'm going to put down the power if I can. It is just spinning those front wheels. We've gone out quite wide actually there on the right hand turn. But we're coming up the hill now. This is usually where we can pick up a little bit of speed. The wheels aren't spinning as much when we're traveling uphill. It wasn't terrible up there. Don't really need much braking, although the Volvo it keeps snapping left and right, which is quite hard to control. I'm doing my very best to control it, but to no avail. We're coming through the horribly deceptive corner there, onto the last couple of corners. This does feel faster than our previous run, but not by much. So let's see if we can at least get this thing in the 226s. 
I'd be happy with that. Into the final corner, dab of the brakes there. Now we're down the hill. I'm just going to floor it down the hill and see what we can do. That was much faster than our previous run. A 225.329. That was a lot, lot better keeping it in 4th, 5th and 6th gear. I'm going to attempt to try and beat the Pontiac's time in our next run. We've only got to shave off 2 seconds there, so I think it is possible. Let's see what we can do. Okay, and here we go. I'm going to keep it about half throttle off the line here try and get as much speed as we can from the launch i think that is where we're going to be seeing a lot of the speed in the straight straight up to sixth gear getting it slowed down for this corner the volvo does get slowed down for that corner probably the best out of all the cars i've seen so far i'm going to keep it in fifth gear we're just going to potter around on these first couple of corners and then as soon as we get a straight like we have here I'm just going to boot the car and see if we can pick up as much speed as possible. Sixth gear is where this car is happy, it's not spinning. Fifth gear for the corners, we have got a thousand plus horsepower so power is not a concern in this vehicle, we can keep it quite high geared and the Volvo should be okay so when we get a little bit of a jump like that and the car starts spinning that we have a problem okay coming up to the hairpin corner now let's see if we can get this thing around the hairpin cleanly it's a little bit on the grass a little bit of handbrake action there but we're out of the hairpin nicely a little bit of wheel spin in fourth change up to fifth and the car seems a lot happier now let's see if we can slow it down for these right handers here and change to fourth and try and keep the wheel spin to a minimum fifth up the hill is where it was happy in the last run we're pottering around at about 90 miles an hour which is not horrendous but it's not the fastest we've seen so far some of the more purpose-built all-wheel drive rally cars like the audi were a lot faster but coming up to this corner just going to let it coast around there because we do not want to be going off there. We've got to let it coast around most of the corners. With it being front wheel drive, it wants to understeer quite badly. I'm going to keep it in fifth and sixth gear to try and negate as much of the understeer as possible. Down the hill, I'm going to go for sixth gear and I'm just going to boot it. And there we go, across the line with a two minute. 24.378 that was the fastest time we've seen from the volvo so far but sadly not quite enough to beat the pontiac which did a 223 but let's have a look at the leaderboard and that was our run for the volvo 850r let's have a look at the leaderboard two minutes 24.378 will put the 850r in last place just behind the Pontiac we ran in the third episode did a 2.23. Sadly, it was nowhere near fast enough to knock off that Lamborghini, which did the 2.05, almost 20 seconds slower than the Lamborghini. But I'm hoping next week our vehicle is going to beat the Lamborghini. I was happy with the Volvo, kind of to be expected with the amount of understeer we had going on. Would you consider this thing as a rally car in Forza Horizon? Possibly not. I've not had great success with this thing on the road. And it doesn't look like this thing has much success off-road either. However, I do love the Volvo. It's an awesome, awesome car in real life. And especially the iconic Omega Express livery makes this thing one of the best looking cars in the game. But there we go, 2 minute 24 for the Volvo. I hope you did enjoy this episode. Leave a like on the video if you did. Just lets me know that you guys want me to make more of these episodes. And if you're new and you want to stay up to date with the series, then make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. But that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I will see you in the next one.